What's going on everybody? It's Justin Gazza uh, and this is Living Moving to Seattle, Washington. It is the channel that gives you all the nitty gritty details and information that you need to know about living, moving right here to the Pacific Northwest, Puget Sound, and Seattle, Washington. And in this video, we're gonna get right into it and we're gonna talk about Capitol Hill. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of living in one of Seattle's most popular neighborhoods uh, and newsworthy neighborhoods, Capitol Hill. And just as an aside, as a fun fact about Capitol Hill, if you're unfamiliar with Seattle's geography, right? So Seattle's on uh, the Puget Sound, comes up some slopes, some steep hills uh, into downtown Seattle. Uh, then there's uh, Lake Union a little bit to the north of downtown Seattle and then below that it slopes up some more hills up into Capitol Hill. Now the capital of Washington State is down in Olympia. Olympia being that's where the capital is and then a little bit further north of Olympia is Tacoma. That's where our biggest port is and then we have Seattle which is kind of like the financial district and and more of the uh, uh, that sort of feel for Seattle. So if you think about, we have our, our, our political system down in Olympia, we have that separate from our industry, which is the Port of Tacoma, right there in Tacoma, and then we have kind of the financial district, not exactly a financial district, but kind of that segmented up into uh, Seattle. Now Seattle actually named Capitol Hill because there's so much uh, money moving around in Seattle that they wanted to try to control the political system a long time ago and they named Capitol Hill Capitol Hill in an effort to move the capital of Washington to Seattle to Capitol Hill. That really has nothing to do with this video. I just wanted to share that little bit of information that you can file away and use at a, a cocktail party. So, so I've got my notes here. I don't want to go through a list really, really, really of the absolute worst things about Capitol Hill. And we're gonna start off easy and then we're gonna get into some real nasty stuff, so stay to the end because you're gonna wanna be sure to see that. Um, all right, number one, easy, easy, uh, or we should go from seven down. So number seven is parking. Capitol Hill has zoned parking. It has, uh, you have to get parking passes to park outside your building on the street. You, depending on what zone you're in, depends on how much money you're gonna spend. Uh, it is, you know, I live kind of over by Ballard, just north of Ballard, and you know, when we go over to Capitol Hill, we don't go that often. When we go, we tend to take an Uber, we tend to take the bus, um, or whatever to get over there because driving over there and trying to find a parking spot when you're going out for dinner can really feel like a nightmare. So thank goodness for taxis and Ubers to get over there. If you live in the area, if you're thinking about, hey, I wanna live in Capitol Hill, I wanna be right where it's all happening, where the shops and the restaurants and the bars are and all the nightlife, uh, renowned nightlife, that's Capitol Hill, that's the spot that you're gonna to wanna to be in. You just have to be prepared that it is difficult at best to find parking in and around. A lot of folks, a lot of buildings, a lot of places actually will allow you to pay extra to get a parking space on top of your, your rent. Even some of the condo buildings don't come with parking spaces. Uh, you can spend, you know, if you only live 15, 20 minutes away, let's say, you know, depending on where you're at, time of day you're traveling, you can spend as much time looking for parking as you can uh, trying to just drive over to Capitol Hill to go have dinner, right? So I know that's an easy one to throw out there, but honestly, uh, you know, Seattle, if you're living in Capitol Hill and you don't have a car, you've got access to great transportation to take you downtown. You've got the light rail system that comes through, right? So you could really live in Capitol Hill without needing a car, depending on where you're commuting to, where you're working and what that looks like. A lot of the people that, that are over there, they do the, uh, um, you know, the hybrid work model or they work in downtown South Lake Union. Really, really convenient and easy to do that. Um, but if you're living outside of Capitol Hill and you are car dependent where you live, so you drive into Capitol Hill, it's my number one, like I really, man oh man, I always plan ahead to give myself 15, 20 more minutes to find parking so that I can be on time. That brings us to number six on the list, which is traffic and traffic and traffic. Probably could have spread that out to be, you know, we could have made this a top 10 list and put traffic in as three of those things. So realistically, because Capitol Hill is one of the first developed neighborhoods in Seattle, 
um, first neighborhoods, a lot of old buildings, skinny streets, crooked streets, a lot of stoplights because it is one of the more dense places in Seattle. There is quite a bit of side street traffic. So if you're planning on commuting into work or you're living downtown, or excuse me, you live in Capitol Hill and you're trying to get out of Capitol Hill to, to get yourself to work, whether it's north, south, or you're traveling uh, west into downtown Seattle, you've gotta be able to buy yourself some time uh, to get through that traffic. Traffic, realistically, uh, you know, I had an office over on Pike Street and it took me, like I said, with traffic and parking, it took me just as long to get through stoplights and, and to my building uh, as it did, you know, to get from out of Ballard onto the highway and over in to Capitol Hill. So plan for and around if you're going to be car dependent. And a lot of people, a lot of people choose to, uh, you know, they'll have their car, but what they do, because it's beautiful in the Pacific Northwest, right? There's mountains, there's lakes, there's rivers, uh, there's snowboarding and hiking and sailing, right? So they wanna have their car so they can go take a drive to Mount Rainier, take a drive to the North Cascades, take a drive just down to Issaquah to the, uh, the foothills down there, uh, Poo Poo Point, Mount Si, you know, get out into Snoqualmie and go hiking. So a lot of people just have their car for the weekend. Like they don't drive it to work. They don't take it anywhere. They got, you know, they've got their, their parking permit. They leave their car on the street and they just use it to get into the mountains. And so that's something to consider, something to think about. It is a pretty big hassle though for that parking and that sort of thing, but that does help you alleviate some of that traffic getting in and around town. The, one of the great things about Capitol Hill, again, is they have bus routes that make a lot of sense. The light rail does whip through there and can get you to from point A to point B pretty quickly. And it is really fairly walkable insofar as just that neighborhood. Uh, even if you're in North Capitol Hill, all the way as you make your way down to uh, First Hill and the International District, relatively easy to get around by foot. So that brings us to seven, six, number five on the list, which is just, it is, the absolute worst if you, man, oh man. So I grew up uh, just outside of Gig Harbor, which is in, you know, south, uh, south of Tacoma, southwest. Uh, it's fairly suburban and rural area. It is quiet, quiet, quiet. Uh, and there's not a lot of uh, uh, light pollution and, and, and this sort of thing. So when I moved up into the city, right, it's much busier, it's much louder. There's a lot more stuff going on. And Capitol Hill is renowned for ambulances, police sirens, uh, side street traffic, especially those older apartment buildings with, with uh, old windows, you can hear everything on the street. It's just a, it's a you know, much more densely populated area. You know, people are honking their horns. You can hear people out late partying and you know coming out of bars and restaurants and having those conversations that people have at 2 a.m. in the street. And uh, it can get pretty gregarious on the streets as people move about driving through, people fighting traffic, and it is just, like I say, it is loud, loud, loud. So if you're somebody that's, that's uh, uh, you know, in that where all the bars and restaurants are in Capitol Hill, you know, that feeling, the living there is gonna be, um, you gotta be prepared for that. If you're, if you're raising a family or you've, you've got uh, early shifts or weird working hours, you gotta be prepared for that. Um, you know, even a, a nursing industry, right? If depending on when your shift is, that can that can really wear on you with your shift schedule, right? It's a little bit different further north towards uh, Roanoke in Capitol Hill. As you go north, uh, the the mood changes. There's there's a lot more uh, older, astute homes with decent yards. Uh, there are some townhouses that are coming in there, and that is a different, different vibe. It's still considered Capitol Hill, but it certainly doesn't feel like the Capitol Hill that uh, that we've grown uh, to love or hate uh, in that downtown corridor area, Pike and Pine, uh, in those areas um, where, like I say, the, the music clubs and the bars are. Uh, but just know that if you're coming in, if you're looking for the excitement of bars and restaurants and nightlife, you're also going to get the noise uh, in the streets and just because they're skinny streets and everything else, you're going to get uh, a lot of sirens and ambulances and, and people yelling in the streets just the way that that is. Now that brings me to noise in the streets, brings me to number four 
and Seattle has been suffering from this for the last little while, and that is homelessness. Homelessness has just been, you know, whatever side of the political spectrum, whatever you think the solution is, uh, I think Seattle is swinging the bat hard to try to find good solutions to help people, um, but it is slow going at best. You know, in Seattle, we don't see the homelessness issues in, in Bellevue or Kirkland, uh, but Seattle has become kind of a uh, bullseye, a magnet uh, for that. And besides Third Avenue in downtown Seattle, Pioneer Square in downtown Seattle, uh, the trifecta of, the, of Pioneer Square, Third Avenue, uh, is going to be Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill, we see unfortunately a tremendous amount of trash and homelessness in the streets and that contributes to some of the noise that you hear as people suffer from um, whatever kind of ailments and mental health issues. Uh, a lot of, again, what made me think of that is all the noise in the streets. You might come out of your bar, your favorite bar, close down the club. You might come out of your favorite music venue after seeing a show and are talking loudly with your friends and see someone on the street who is also uh, talking loudly, uh, whether at, you know, with their group of, of other folks who happen to be homeless. I was gonna try to tread lightly or just yelling in the streets, right? So, because we see that, and that's super unfortunate, right? So we do see a lot of people, a lot of tents, a lot of trash, and a lot of homelessness right there in, in Capitol Hill. And it stinks. I think we're on number three of this list as we count down. So we've had traffic and parking, loud and busy streets, and homelessness. And then um, right now, you know, all this stuff kind of piles up as you think about the density of the area, um, if you've watched the news in the recent years, uh, there has been a tremendous amount of attention drawn to crime in Capitol Hill. Now, I'm not saying it's unsafe, but there are you know, people that steal uh, catalytic converters, which is the little catalytic converter on your exhaust pipe, it's full of platinum. Uh, people like to steal that because they're valuable, so they'll cut that off and steal that. There are car break-ins, obviously. That happens uh, in a lot of places. Um, package theft as, as deliveries uh, of your, you know, whatever, whoever you're ordering from online can, you know, there's some safeguards to that, but we see that a lot as well. And then, you know, uh, petty vandalism and, and this sort of thing. My old office building used to get tagged. Uh, all the time there was, I think there was a crew that came out almost every day of the week to paint over um, some of the tags and some of the spray paints that, that, that kids had done. So there are a few ways to mitigate against those, those things, right? Um, don't leave stuff in your car that's valuable. Um, you know, have your packages delivered to a secure location, whether that's an Amazon locker or some other version of that to your office or whatever. You know, those, some of those apartment buildings have good package rooms. A lot of the condo buildings have that as well. And with homes and townhomes, a lot of times there is a place that you can have stuff delivered nearby if you're not working from home and can't get that. But it would be remiss of me to skip the, uh, the element of crime that we see in that area. Personally, I don't know that there's more crime uh, than there ever was. If you look at the, the websites next door uh, and Ring and those things, I think that a lot of people just have it on their phones and so they're more aware of it than they've ever been. Um, and so, but definitely if you're considering that area, think about your lifestyle, where you're gonna live and what precautions that you need to take. I've never felt unsafe hanging out in Capitol Hill late at night. Um, I've seen a lot of a little scuffles, you know, typically with, with the homeless population. Um, but it's you know usually just an exchange of words and a lot of volume. But just things to know, you know, my perspective. I've talked to people that had moved here from other cities, even Chicago, and they said, uh, uh, I think it was Chicago specifically. And they're like, oh, we don't have any kind of issue like that with you know petty theft or vandalism. I don't know if they're just blind to it uh, in their city, uh, or if by talking about it we make it sound like it's worse than it is. 
but it's definitely worth worth talking about and knowing ahead of time kind of that there is stuff like that i see the you know probably more activity in capitol hill you know magnolia is a neighborhood that is very very suburban they even wanted to have their own police department for a while because they felt like it was getting out of hand and, and there really just wasn't much going on there. And that's why I think a lot of it is the awareness of people just seeing stuff on their cell phone and, and kind of knowing that they're, they're seeing a lot more activity. Number two on the list as we work our way down of the absolute worst things about Capitol Hill. Uh, I think this is kind of funny, but I, uh, um, I do think it also kind of stinks, right? So I'm... <laughs> Can't believe I waited to get down to number two. It really makes my list seem like it's out of proportion. Uh, but bars and restaurants are not inexpensive. Uh, so when I think about going out to Capitol Hill, there's some really nice restaurants and then there's a lot of dive bars as well. You know, if you're looking for a deal, that's typically when you're gonna find your dive bar, sports bar, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's not unheard of to pay 12, 14, 17 dollars for a cocktail and anywhere between six and nine dollars for a beer. It, those are, you know, very normal prices. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people that's, that's really expensive. You know, for a long time, it was pretty easy to get a beer for five bucks. Uh, it's not just not the case anymore. Capitol Hill ha draws a lot of people in because of the atmosphere, because it's easy to go from bar to bar to bar, uh, to go out to dinner and then go out for drinks and have uh, a few different establishments on your, on your list for the evening. Uh, and it draws in a ton of people, wait times, you know, to get into a place and find a seat oftentimes are, are a little bit longer. And, you know, because of the draw and appeal, there are, you know, the prices that go along with it. It's very easy uh, to spend, you know, your, your, your money out to eat and out for drinks. And, and just personally, I don't go out that much. Uh, um, and so on those special occasions when we do go out and make plans for dinner and drinks and stuff, um, you know, we've planned for it. We've, we expect those prices. It's easy to spend, you know, 150, 200 bucks a night kind of thing going out. But for those folks that go out all the time, spending that kind of money can be a little bit of a drag unless, unless you're flush for it and unless that's your favorite thing on the planet and unless you're planned for it, unless you expect it. And so we wanted to bring that up. It is so easy uh, to go out and spend that kind of money uh, going out to bars and restaurants and stuff. Uh, even more, I know some people that spend, spend a lot more, but like I said, um, it's not really my favorite thing to do in the world. We go out every once in a while, but um, for a lot of folks, it is, uh, you know, most nights of the week is how they, spend their, how they spend their time. So as funny as it is to bring up bars and restaurants, you know, I don't know what your lifestyle is, what you're looking to do. Maybe that's right up your alley. Maybe you're coming from New York, coming from Manhattan, and that seems very reasonable and, and inexpensive, and you're pumped to get out here and experience uh, some of the restaurants and bars that, that make it into the papers uh, and have those great followings. There's some great spots for that. But that brings me to the number one absolute worst thing about uh, uh, living in Capitol Hill. And the thing about it is, is that if you didn't know, you know, a long time ago, back in the day, Capitol Hill was one of those places where it was very affordable to live. It was really an artist's community. We'd see a lot of little art galleries and little shops and, and this sort of thing. And, you know, the coffee shops moved in, the art galleries moved in, and it became very, very much a, uh, an area that was open for everybody to live. And it was very, very affordable. And as Seattle has, has grown, and even in 2019, uh, I wanna say we saw more people moving into the heart of Seattle than actually the suburbs. And through the last uh, 10 years or so, Seattle has, has definitely changed in demographics and has definitely changed in affordability. So those same you know, cheap apartments that the, you know, people used to get or the room shares. I remember a buddy of mine, uh, you know, gosh, I want to say it was sometime in the early 2000s, had rented a place in Capitol Hill that uh, it didn't even have a kitchen or its own bathroom. It was a basement unit and he had a hot plate and a shared bathroom down the hall because that's what the building had. So he shared that his bathroom with, I want to say, seven other people that had the uh, seven other apartments in the basement and his rent was so inexpensive 
for that location and for what he's got there. We just don't see those types of things anymore in those price points. Now granted, that, that might not be your ideal living condition, but that's kind of what we used to see uh, in a lot of these old Seattle uh, houses and neighborhoods where, you know, seven people would rent a house together and pay, you know, a hundred bucks a month kind of thing. Um, a lot of that stuff is gone. Those cheap apartments seem to be gone. We've seen, you know, a lot of the prices increase in that area where if you were, hey, feeling the cramp of saying, you know what, hey, my, my one bedroom, my studio just isn't affording me the lifestyle I want to lead for your rental payment, you could move a little bit further out of Seattle, uh, you know, and get yourself into a townhouse somewhere and get yourself a little bit more space. And you wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be in Capitol Hill anymore, but, but you'd still be in Seattle. So um, something to think about, you know, if you're considering wherever you're at and, and whatever kind of lifestyle you're chasing, but the affordability of Capitol Hill has definitely changed over the last few years as it, uh, I believe the word that they want to use is uh, gentrifies. It has changed over time uh, and become a little bit more, um, uh, I was going to say a little bit more corporate, but that's not, that's not the word we're looking for. It definitely doesn't have uh, a business suit feel. But anyway, you, hopefully you get the picture. Um, so realistically, living in Capitol Hill offers you so much opportunity for bars and restaurants and small shops. Uh, I think there's a few record stores out there, vintage closing shops. Um, it has the nightlife, it has the, uh, the um, concert, you know, the, the music venues. So there's a, there's a lot going on in Capitol Hill and if that's what you're looking for, could be a great neighborhood for you. It's very walkable, very easy to commute into downtown Seattle, use a light rail, uh, get over into, um, you know, some of those places, uh, you know, the Swedish Hill, uh, the or Swedish Hospital in First Hill, uh, the Cherry Hill area, like these areas, it's really easy to, to commute to and work at and live, work and play right there in Capitol Hill. Has really everything that you're looking for, except for peace and quiet. If you're looking for peace and quiet, Capitol Hill probably isn't the neighborhood for you unless you go a little bit further north of Capitol Hill, a little bit closer to Roanoke, uh, you'll find that there. And so there's some other little pockets there that we can talk about. Really appreciate you checking out the video. Hopefully you got a lot of value from that, had some fun with the list. And uh, if we can be of any help, reach, we're helping people make the move all the time. So just reach out to us, shoot us a text, give us a call. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you got a kick out of the video and uh, subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video comes out. And we'll see you on the next one. All right, talk to you.